Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you are doing extremely well. First of all, if you are new to this channel, then make sure to subscribe the channel for more such content and it will really motivate me to create more such content for you. You can follow me on other platforms as well. The link is there in the description itself. So with that note, let's get started with today's problem. So in this video, we are going to talk about producer consumer problem. Now, this is one of the famous interview questions and probably this problem in today's video will help you to get a better understanding about the synchronization and the uses of threads in Java, right? So just first of all, before, uh, you know, diving into the code part and all those things, there are a few concepts, few important things that will clear and then uh, we'll proceed ahead, right? So a quick introduction about the problem. So this problem is also known as the bounded buffer problem as specified here. And we can say that it is a classic problem, right? So there are high chances of this question being asked during your interview as well, that it is a classic multi-process uh, synchronization problem where uh, we are trying to achieve synchronization between multiple processes. Now, as the name here indicates producer consumer. So what does this problem actually means? So here we'll be having two processes, producer and consumer, right? And these two processes, are going to share a common buffer, a common buffer, or you can say a common queue of fixed sites. Now, what is the uh, work of producer here? So uh, if taking a layman's example here, so you can consider like it's in factory, right? We do have that factory does produce some items and does store them and we like it is being stored somewhere and then consumer is consuming those items. So some sort of uh, similar kind of things that producer is going to what? It is going to produce the items right and consumer is going to consume the items those items which is being produced by the producer now certain things certain normal uh, cases that you can think about what if producer hasn't produced anything what do i actually mean by this that let's say producer is producing and keeping the data here in the queue what if producer hasn't produced anything so it means the queue would be empty so if the queue is empty can consumer consume anything obviously no Consumer can consume only when the queue is not empty. Means the data has been produced by the producer. Other thing is that it should not happen like this, that there is no demand and uh, the producer is continuously producing the items. It should not happen in this way, right? So like as if I have mentioned that we have fixed size before, fixed size queue here. So producer have to take this under consideration or producer should not produce any data once the queue once the buffer is full right it has to wait till the time consumer consumes the data because when it will consume a space will be created and once the space is created then producer can continue with the production part so this is how the problem is i hope you must have got a bit idea about the problem now comes the thing that how we are going to solve this i mean when it comes to the coding part and obviously here we are going to do this in java so how we are going to do this so there are certain ways to solve this problem. The one possible solution is by using semaphore, right? The second one is that obviously we are going to discuss in this particular video. So the second one is using threads in Java. So here in this video, I'll be talking about this solution. The third way is the third one is by using blocking queue, blocking queue. Right, so these are the three ways. Now, uh, there could be a possibility that an interviewer can ask you, okay, you have done this, can you solve this problem using blocking queue? Or let's say if he's interested in uh, solving this problem by semaphore, right? So that's why I just mentioned that these are the possible solutions that you can use for solving this particular problem. But here in this video, we'll be doing this by threads. If you want me to discuss the solution from these two approaches as well, just let me know in the comment section, right? So threads in Java. So there is some basic that you should have the understanding about only then you'll be able to understand what actually we are coding and how the things are working. So first, let's talk about it. First, let's talk about how does the communication is going to take place in the thread, right? So let's let's have a look about the same. Okay, so for the communication to take place between the threads, we'll be using three methods here. Wait, I mean, I, mean, I just want to introduce you about them. So wait. Uh, is the method notify is the method for the communication between the threads and we have notify all right so first of all let's understand about the thread so i mean let's say a thread is doing a particular task a thread is performing some specific task now if you want to pause this thread and you want it to do nothing 
depending on a certain situation i mean if this a certain situation occurs just ask this thread to pause right so then we can use this wait method for example if we are uh, taking a reference of our problem that right now we are discussing that is producer consumer problem so what do we want that producer thread has to wait if the queue is full also the consumer thread has to wait if the queue is empty so in both the cases what is this we want our thread uh, that it should not do any operation in in both these cases that we discussed right so now if uh, if a specific thread is in waiting condition i mean if the condition that you give that for producer if the queue is full and consumer if the queue is empty so if this condition become true right if some uh, okay if this condition become true right then what we want that uh, we want our thread to keep on wait to keep to become pause right now comes the other two method that is not notify and notify all so both these methods are basically as by the name itself you can get the idea that they are used to send a notification but notify method if we are using it will send a notification it will send a notification to one of the threads i mean but if there are multiple threads so out of these only one thread i mean now there is no surety which one but yes one lucky one thread will get the notification whereas in case of notify all it will notify or it will send notification to all the threads that are waiting okay so so that's what it is now uh, now the things come that how we are going to use this wait and notify in the code as of now I'll just give you an idea like what do these methods actually do but in the code as i've said that we'll be using them so how wait and notify will be using in the code because uh, see i hope you have uh, heard about sleep method right so whenever you want to use the sleep method you just simply do thread dot sleep right that's that's what we do but the thing is the thing is most of the java developers and sometimes when you are not having the right practice then you can do the similar kind of mistake that you are using this wait method with the thread however thread does not have any such method right then comes the question then how we'll be calling the wait method so wait method you have to call on the object which is being shared between the threads which is being shared between two threads oh what is that means one object or you can say one resource that will be shared between these two threads we have to call wait method on that now in our problem just think about it in our problem the producer consumer problem that we are discussing what resource is that what object is that which is being shared between between the threads what is that object that we are sharing q right because from q we are uh, in the q we are producing data removing the data adding the data so what is being what is being shared q here being shared so obviously the object is going to belong to whom the object is going to belong to q so basically we'll be calling the wait method on the object uh, which is nothing but q in that case now other confusion and other question other confusion that can comes into the mind that okay uh see there are two ways of synchronization there are two ways of synchronization there are two ways of synchronization one is you can use synchronized block otherwise with your method you can use synchronized right so i mean what is the right way what is the right way so it is generally suggested that we should put that chunk of code which is being shared which is being shared the chunk of code or the resource that is being shared in the synchronized block so now if you are going to use the synchronized block which object are you going to use inside the block obviously in the synchronized block see first of all what is the uh, purpose of synchronized block the purpose is that at one time only one thread is able to access it if the situation is for that multiple threads can access multiple threads environment we are having so only at a time one thread can access it you can consider as a critical section so at one time only one thread can access it right so what is that resource that is being shared that is the queue only right that is the queue only and obviously we are going to use that object so this object is going to be kept inside this block which is because this is the shared resource i hope that that makes sense because this is a shared object between the multiple threads the object of the queue the object of the queue right now one more thing to make clear so sometimes uh, you can see you can come across a uh, this thing that inside if we are having that a particular condition if a particular condition met 
let's say our object uh, as of now we are referencing it as lock right so we are putting as lock dot wait so it is always recommended it is always recommended or it is always mentioned that always call wait or notify from the loop not instead of instead of using it from if block so this is not the right approach we should have while the condition then lock dot wait so we are in the if, if condition we are having this condition that uh, if the producer if the queue is full if the queue is full then we want the producer thread that okay you have to be on wait right but when we are using if block here so there is certain chances of certain kinds of bugs being reached now what is the thing that there could be a possibility that still we want to keep our uh, thread on wait we want to keep our thread on wait but just if if condition only once it is going to be changed it, it, it is going to be checked then next what will happen certain wrong actions could be taken which may cause problem that is still the requirement was to keep it on wait only but as if just once the condition got checked and next time thread is going to insert an item right on a full queue or maybe trying to consume an item from an empty queue that's why it is always recommended that we have to call the wait and notify method from a loop and not from the if block right so these were the certain things that you should have in mind before the implementation you should have the idea about right so now we are clear with all these parts right now we are clear with all these parts so now comes the thing that a basic thing like what all we, we are going to what all threads and everything that we are going to have in our code so we'll be having two threads one will be our producer thread and other will be one is going to be the producer thread and other is going to be the consumer thread right so and it is going to be implemented by using producer producer and consumer class producer and consumer class now you know we can implement i mean there are two ways to do so you can use runnable interface or you can extend the thread class so it's up to you now the logic what producer is going to do and the consumer is going to do is going to be in the run method right you must be knowing about it now we all know that always there is that one thread that does exist even if you're not getting a thread which is being started by the jvm what is that thread known as main thread so what main thread is going to do main thread is going to start both our producer as well as consumer thread and uh, obviously that we are going to have a queue as if i specified a buffer so that we're going to use this is going to be an object of linked list class right so if you, you must be aware that linked list is also an implementation of a queue interface only okay so i hope uh, we are having the understanding of each and everything so now we can just dig into the code part okay so the code i will already mention here because if i'll be typing and doing this stuff so maybe the video length will be longer right so we have already discussed the main part of the implementation that was the uses of uh, wait notify methods and how basically we're going to use them what is the purpose and all those things so pretty much now understanding the code is not going to be a you know a, a problem for you and you will be able to implement it by yourself so yeah let me know if you want me to put this code uh, uh, link in the description right so what basically is so as we discussed we'll be having two classes producer as well as consumer so they both are extending thread class right so here uh, as already discussed that we'll be having a queue that is the buffer right and uh, this current value and maximum size we are maintaining so what basically uh, as of now this implementation is that in our queue we'll be just inserting a number and like the number as of now is zero then on inserting we'll be implementing the value and we have taken the max size that is as 10 so this is our constructor now we have to implement the run method but which will be containing the actual logic related to the producer so first of all we have this condition while the thread is not interrupted we'll continue now you know that that wait and notify all these methods we have to use in synchronized block only so this is a synchronized block and now this requires an object which is we already discussed which is going to be our shared resource that is nothing but our queue so first condition is that like if our queue is full so in that case what we have to do we have to put our the lock uh, sorry the thread which is responsible for the production part we have to put it on wait so that is what we are doing here we already discussed that we should use while loop for the same now if this that is not the case then we'll be producing the value so just to see the um, value here we have added this uh, print a statement and we are printing the value as well and then we are adding this value 
to our queue and just implementing the value here. And once the production is done, then what the next process is that the all other threads which are on wait. So as of now here in this code, we have taken. So basically, we have three threads, you know, the main thread is always going to be there. And other than this, we have taken two threads, producer as well as consumer, just two threads we have. So here I have used notify method, but otherwise the scenario could be that we have multiple producers or multiple consumers. In that case, uh, we already discussed right? you have to go with the notify all because notify is going to notify just a specific thread if multiple threads are working. So even we are not sure which one thread it is going to notify. So in that scenario, you have to use notify all even here also you can use notify all but as of now we were having two, two threads only so I have used notify right. So that is what now we have our next class this is consumer class which is again extending thread and here we have this queue now the actual logic regarding the consumption part so we'll continue till the time thread is not interrupted now here the main condition was that if the queue is empty so what we want the thread which is doing the execution regarding the consumption part we have to keep it on wait right and then uh, for consumption what we'll be doing we'll be just removing the value from the queue so here we are just printing it that the value we have consumed and again whatever thread is on wait this will be here will be our production the producer thread that is on wait we are notifying it ki, hey you can start your work so here we are notifying the thread which is on wait so that is what now the main method so what we are doing just just added a print statement this is our producer consumer problem here is our buffer now um, we have created two two threads here producer consumer and just i have set or given the name to them producer and consumer and here we have started both the threads right okay so we can execute it also here uh, so here okay yeah so here you can see q is full producer thread is on wait consuming value producing value and then q is empty consumer thread is on wait like that as if we have added the printer statements here so yeah this was the code uh, regarding the regarding the producer consumer problem using threads in Java. Now certain points again, I'm just going to repeat, although we have already discussed uh, related to that, that um, here are two methods which are playing the important role or I should count three, wait, notify and notify all, which is responsible for inter-thread communication, always to keep a uh, call, wait, if I, wait, notify and notify all methods inside the synchronized methods. If you're not going to do the same, then JVM will throw illegal monitor state exception and to call these methods inside a loop, which I've already specified. Now, it is also suggested that prefer notify all to uh, notify method, right? So these were the things to discuss. I hope that you were able to understand the problem. You were able to understand the concepts that we discussed and the code part as well. Let me know uh, if you want me to discuss the other approaches as well. That is the implementation using the semaphore and blocking queue. So. Uh, we'll probably record the video about the same as well. Thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. Bye-bye.